here in Knoxville today. 95,000 plus for the annual matchup between the Commodores and the Volunteers. Is it the 85th or the 86th meeting? And how many's Vanderbilt won? Even well, that's in question, Dan. Yeah, they like to keep it, keep it up in the air. Actually, there's a discrepancy because of a game that was possibly played during uh, WW1, World War I. And, uh, and that game, uh, Vandy had a club team that they fielded. And uh, Tennessee put together a little club here. But uh, Vandy won that game, so they're claiming that one was a victory as well. Well, if, if you think that this rivalry is in any way deteriorated over the years, we got something to show you that happened just a couple of minutes ago when the two teams took the field. And this was the scene about 10 minutes ago here in Knoxville. And I mean, this was not your normal shoving match. This is a pretty good fight. Yeah, yeah, this one went on for a while, and I guess the, the fellows just could not wait for kickoff. They wanted to mix it up a little bit early on, but uh, it's a good thing that the thing got stopped. But you know, if you want to know how big this game is here in Knoxville, well, take a look at this. This is not the sports section. This is the <laughs> front page of the Knoxville papers here. So this game is big in Knoxville as well as Nashville. Well, the third man in our broadcast team down on the field, and he's going to be hearing the cheers of the Orange Flat Tennessee fans. Brian Nooner's down on the field. Brian? Yeah, let's talk a little bit about the surface that these two teams are playing on today. It's an astroturf surface, but as you can see uh, by the discoloration of the green and the splitting seam, it's extremely worn and it's extremely hard. Now, I talked to some of the players on both teams before the game. They were complaining about how tough this surface is to play on. They say it's very tough on the joints, in particular the knees. Now, there is relief in sight. They're actually talking about tearing up this turf as early as next year, bringing grass. But once again, that's as early as next year, so it's not going to help them out in this game. All right, Brian. There's the T of Tennessee. 28 players make their final trip through the tee today. The Volunteers and the Commodores. We've got the kickoff coming up next. A rather intimidating place to play for the opposition. Neyland Stadium in Knoxville, Tennessee. And it's filled to the Raptors. And for the most part, they're wearing Volunteer Orange. The Vols come in 8-2. and two. Four and two in the Southeastern Conference, led by that man, the Southeastern Conference Dean of Coaches, Johnny Majors, in his 15th season here in Knoxville. 110 wins, 58 losses, and eight ties overall in his 23rd year as a collegiate head coach. Johnny told us yesterday, he says, you know, you have to look back at this class I had that has come through now being been one of the most successful senior classes in the history of Tennessee football. He says, remember, we were 0-6 to start 88. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he was crying about how many seniors he's losing, too. But he's reloaded already. Uh, on the other sideline is Jerry Donardo, who's in his first year at Vanderbilt. And uh, as we were talking earlier in the Open, he really has done a sensational job the last uh, four games straight they've won. And he is looking for his fifth today. His motto this season has been, what's important now? And if you put those three words together and take the first letter, it means win. And that's what the Commodores have done four straight times. You've got to go back to 1982 to find the last Vandy team that won five straight. I think you'd have to have gone to Vanderbilt to, to get that one right off. <laughs> <laughs> the captains at midfield. Things have calmed down considerably since the two teams tried to come out of the tunnel when we had quite a brouhaha going down in the end zone. Tennessee won the toss, defers to the second half, so Vandy has their option. You see Andy Kelly playing his final game, the quarterback of the Volunteers. Vanderbilt will get the football first. Vandy 1-10 and 10 last year. So Jerry DiNardo, even though a rookie coach has really instilled a winning attitude in this club, Dan, here's a team that's won more in this season than they had in the previous three combined. Yeah, and it really got started off early. You know, he took them to an early camp uh, outside of Nashville. And he said he wanted to work on their heads, and that's one of the reasons why he's changed the helmets around. He says it's going to be from the head up. they got to start thinking of themselves as winners in order to become winners. I don't know if those gold helmets have anything to do with the fact that DiNardo was an All-American at Notre Dame and then a top assistant at Colorado, but those helmets are about the same color as those two schools. Uh, you know, he was talking about recruiting up in the, uh, in the uh, Chicago area, and I said, hey, is uh, Lou Holtz going to come and say, don't be, you know, scrounging around in my area anymore? <laughs> Mandy will get the football first. The deep man back, Corey Harris. Along with Tony Jackson and Gabriel Watley. 3D for Vandy. For 
We're set to go. As we said, either the 85th or 86th meeting, depending on who you listen to. It should be a good one, and we're underway in Knoxville. Harris at the goal line. And he's got an opening outside and got to the 25. Good run back, 25-yard return. Marcus Wilson, who Dan talked about at the top of the show, an excellent quarterback leading the Southeastern Conference in scoring. That's his passing yardage. He's got more rushing yardage than he does passing. But he is an excellent all-around leader of the eyeball attack. And it's really a ball control attack, Brad. They want to keep the ball on the ground and complement their defense by burning up the clock. And as soon as we say that, they come out with a three-wide receiver look <laughs> from the 26-yard line. And straight up the middle and a big opening and out to the 35-yard line. Goes Carlos Thomas. As we take a look at our BMW starting lineups, Thomas, who just carried, along with Harris in the backfield. Payne, the wing. Civilian, the wide receiver. Here's the front wall. Dueling, signs, Brothen, a good one. Bell and Craycraft. And second down at short yardage, just what you want to be in to start the ball game. Second down, a yard to go. And it's going to be third down and about two now as Corey Harris is hit for a loss by Chris Mims. Mims, the man that just made the stop, part of the front wall for Tennessee as we take a look at their starters. Mims and Smith, two good ones on the outside. Surlis and Bradley are the tackles in the 4-3 alignment. The linebacking cool fields, Walker and Daryl Hardy, their playmaker, big playmaker. Miley, Lincoln, Dale Carter, an All-American, and David Bennett in the secondary. Third down and two. From the eyeball. And the pitch, and Harris got to find the handle and does, but he goes down back at the 25. And it's Dale Carter from the secondary. This play was set up to go, and Dale Carter really lucked out on the play because watch with a fumble here. He's able to come up and make the stop before the first down is made. Now, Carter it almost gets picks up the fumble there. He gets into position to grab it. But uh, fortunately for uh, Vandy, he doesn't. Carter, who made the big hit, will be the deep man as David Lawrence will set to punt Carter and his numbers on the year. So a nine-yard gain on the opening play for Vandy, and then it's two more loss of yardage and a putting situation, and Lawrence got all of it. Carter has to backpedal. It bounces inside the 20, goes out of bounds at the 18-yard line. Good kick, 58-yard punt, and no return. Andy Kelly, he's got all the passing records now at Tennessee, both single season and career. 6'3", senior quarterback. Comes in with 13 touchdown tosses on the year, 15 interceptions. But number one in all the major statistical categories. And he gathers around the number two offense in the SEC and the 12th ranked offense in the country. The weapons at his disposal, the two freshman running backs that we talked about, James Stewart. And uh, Aaron Hayden is the other one, and they're both very good. First play of the game for Tennessee, and it's Stewart who breaks it outside before Vandy can bring him down. But Stewart may have a first down. Let's take a look. Brunson and Stewart in the backfield. Faulkner and Carl Pickens, the wideouts, and Von Reeves, despite being banged up, starts at tight end. And a good front wall. Lenore, along with Stoll, Fisher, Myslinski, and Daphne. As you took a look at the defensive set for the Commodores, and already Tennessee with a first down. Three wide receiver look this time for Kelly and he'll keep it on the ground as Stewart. Out to the 33 yard line. Got about four more. Let's take another look now at the Vandy defense and their BMW starting up front line. Young, Woolridge and DeWitt across the front. Quarles, Collins, Keith and Steve Meads. Robbie Young, Robert Davis, Aaron Smith, and Rico Francis in the secondary. 
Meads listed as a starter. Actually, Gary Rogers is probably going to see more time at that spot after having been injured in recent weeks. He's in there, number 41, at one of the linebacker spots. Second and six. Stewart again. Big hole on his way across the 45 and out to the 49-yard line. Robert Davis finally brings him down, but Stewart got 16. Fred, I want to tell you something, though. Bernard Daphne, number 75, the left tackle, you'll see him right in the corner of your screen, gets the key block. It's a reach block out on the corner. He dominates his man, seals everything inside, and that allows Stewart to run free once he hits the corner and gets into the secondary. James Stewart. Not Jimmy Stewart. <laughs> no acting to this guy. He's got 31 yards on three carries already. Nice play fake by Kelly. Throws outside. Got it complete. A pickup of nine to J.J. McCleskey. J.J. was over there. He was open so long, I thought he was going to get a manicure over on the sideline before he caught the ball. Couldn't wait for that pass of Kelly's to get there. Excellent receiving core. We talked about Pickens, but here's McCleskey, who's got 35 grabs now on the year. And you see how the play action freezes the linebackers, holds them up just a little bit, and the same thing with the secondary, because they're reacting up, coming up for the run, and all of a sudden they realize the ball's going outside. Three wide receiver group again. On the ground is Stewart. Look at the hole outside. Stewart inside the 30 to the 26-yard line. Anytime a running back has a great run, you can always credit the big fellas up front. And once again, it was Bernard Daphne, number 75, on the backside, staying with his man. That allows Stewart to bend this play back, hit it back outside. You saw, saw Daphne right there deliver the second shot. Stewart gets outside, and he's again in that secondary, running free for a gain of 16. So a couple of big runs by Stewart in this drive. This time they go to the first man, Brunson. And he's down to about the 22-yard line. Shelton Quarles, one of the outside linebackers, and Allen Young from the defensive line made the stop. Fred, one of the things we didn't talk about but uh, probably should be addressed is the fact that Vanderbilt's had 20-some days off, you know, that is to prepare for this ball game. Tennessee coming off a game last week against Kentucky. You've got to believe when you're coming off a ball game, you're ready to play, whereas if you've had that long layoff, it really affects you in a negative way. Second down, Tennessee, and Stewart goes to about the 18-yard line. He's going to be a yard or maybe two shy of the first down. Quarles again in on the hit along with Allen Young. When I talked to Jerry DiNardo before the game, uh, we were talking about his defense, which is a small defense. He says that uh, they're going to play out of that 30 front all day, but they're going to slant a lot. And the reason why they slant is because they're so small up front that they've got to try to make people miss on the blocks. So here's another short yardage situation. Third down, about two. Stewart, first down and then some. To the 12-yard line. Stewart might end up with a 100-yard game in the first quarter, Dan, the way he's running. Yeah, and one of the reasons why is because of the tackling uh, in the linebackers in the secondary for uh, for Vandy. You see right here, Shelton Quarles is coming in, and he's got the tackle made in the backfield and just slips off. And, and you can't have that if you hope to stop a team like Tennessee offensively. Quarles has had a big game already. Three tackles on this drive, but Tennessee has driven it to a first down at the Vandy 12. Opening quarter, no score. Tennessee's first drive and big chunks of yardage for Stewart again down near the six-yard line. Rod Keith, the inside linebacker, in on the hit. Hey, you know, I'm not so sure that when uh, Anton Davis and, and uh, Charles McCray left that the, they, they didn't leave a groove in this turf, you know, because they're running <laughs> behind these tackles. And you can, you see Daphne over there, 75, with a big block sealing everything up inside. Uh, he, along with Myslinski over in that uh, left side, are really doing a nice job. Stewart was 63 yards on this drive. Seven carries. Second and four at the six-yard line. Kelly throws outside. An overshot is intended receiver, Craig Faulkner. Robbie Young was closing on him fast, too. Number nine coming up from the secondary for, uh, for Vandy. Those are those times when you, you don't hear the footsteps, you hear the turf steps. <laughs> and you can hear it out on the hard steps on this field, as Brian talked about earlier. It's rock hard down there. Third down. Tennessee on the year. 47% on their third down conversions. Tied for best in the SEC. 
Phillips checks into the Tennessee backfield. All three receivers to the right. That's where Kelly rolls, throws on the run, and it's going to be a first down, but not a touchdown. Faulkner made the grab, got leveled at about the yard and a half line. Good enough for the first and goal. Rico Francis saved the touchdown, but the Volunteers knocking on the Vandy door right now. Watch Faulkner here just find a little hole and settle in the, in the defense. And what he's doing is looking for an open area. And, of course, Kelly finds him in there. But uh, he just settled down in there. He got past the linebackers and settled down and caught the football. Full house backfield for Tennessee. First and goal just inside the two. The pitch to Stewart. Touchdown, Tennessee. to get the balls there, and he got them six. That's the payoff. Not a bad opening drive for Tennessee. Again, go back to a couple of things. Uh, missed tackles on the part of Vandy, and again, there was another one there. Allen Young, 58, had an opportunity to make the stop and, uh, and missed it. John Bexmore in for the point after. And the freshman nails it through. Eight minutes and 27 seconds left in the first quarter. And Tennessee's opening offensive series, impressive. Led by Stewart, his eight carries the charm. It's 7-0 Tennessee. Tennessee by a touchdown with 8.27 to go first quarter. And... Dan, what an opening drive, 82 yards and 12 plays. Uh, a, a very crisp drive, too. Uh, Tennessee, very few mistakes on the drive. Good rushing attack. And how about the kickoff of Joey Chapman? Chapman buried it five yards out of the end zone. Let's take another look at James Stewart's eighth carry of Tennessee's opening drive. And I mentioned Allen Young, 58, missing the stop, and he went through a lot of blockers to get there, but right there he almost had Stewart. But Stewart uh, stumbles forward and then stumbles into the end zone for the touch. You see the time of the drive, four minutes and 20 seconds. Those are the kind of drives that Johnny Majors is very pleased to see his offense have. Vandy started their opening series at their 26-yard line. Commodores work this time from the 20. And the eye bone as Harris hit at the line, stood up and dropped. Mims made the first contact. And then got help from his friends. Let's go to Brian Nooner on the field. Brian? Tennessee head coach Johnny Major said it was very important that the Volunteers get on the board first in this game. The reason is because Vanderbilt has that running game that has a tendency to freeze the clock. But now the Commodores are in a different situation. they got to play catch-up. Johnny Majors balls out to the early lead. Vandy with a second and ten. From its own 20-yard line. Wilson wants to throw and does. And off the hands of Derek Gregg, his intended receiver. Gregg got his hands on it. Pretty good ball. Just didn't pull it down. Yeah, he did. I think one of the things that would help Marcus Wilson, though, when he rolls out as if he sets up. You know, if you're trying to throw on the run all the time, it's, it's very difficult. And that time, he, he put it up just a little bit too high for his receiver. And Jeremy Lincoln came in and made the play defensively for Tennessee. So it's third down and 10. Andy, the team ranked last in the Southeastern Conference in passing and in a passing situation here. And Wilson loads it and incomplete. Derek Payne is intended receiver thrown behind him. And it's three and out again for the Commodores. And now is when you get in trouble. The Vanderbilt offense is built on field position and time of possession. And you've been losing the battle of field position, obviously, in the first, uh, first quarter. And now uh, time of possession is working against you as well. David Lawrence last time hit a 58-yard punt that Carter couldn't return. You've got to watch out for this volunteer special team group, though, because they can flat get after the kickers. Number 87 Hardy has been a guy who's been blocking kicks all season long. Lawrence goes to the left side this time. Off the side of his foot. Let's see where they spot him at about the 41-yard line. 
of Tennessee. 39 yard kick this time and the Volunteers will be on offense when we come back. Tennessee leads it at home by a touchdown. Things around with the Knicks. Patrick Ewing. Here at 7-0 Tennessee. Their opening drive took them 82 yards for a touchdown. On first down, a play action, and Kelly throws off the run. Got it to Faulkner inside the 40. Nice spin move by Faulkner, and he's down to the 33-yard line. 20 yards, Kelly to Faulkner. <laughs> yeah, stay tuned for the NFL with Andy Kelly. I don't think there's any doubt about that, but, you know, play action works so well. Watch a Robert Davis, number 11, the right cornerback for... Uh, for Vandy is stuck all the way back. I mean, he's back like 20 yards off the ball when Kelly gets through faking here. And it's just an excellent job of faking. He's got uh, some protection out front with his offensive guard. Now, there's nobody within 10 yards of the receiver right there, Faulkner, who makes a nice grab and then cuts inside. First down at the 33, and here comes number 33. Stewart to the 29-yard line. Shelton Quarles, who's been in on a bunch of tackles already, made the hit. Faulkner, who had that last catch, says, you know, everybody has a misconception that I'm a possession receiver a ball control type of guy <laughs> wait a minute now I'll run a 4-4 <laughs> and he's already got a couple of grabs today his last one good for 20 yards there he is that, with that kind of speed you can not only possess the ball but you can also <laughs> run with it Faulkner and McCleskey go out to the right side with Pickens a rather Corey Fleming to the left and going nowhere is Mario Brunson met at the line of scrimmage. Brad, I talked about the defensive line of Vandy slanting down, and that time Alan Young slanted right into the play. A nice play by him because uh, he's got some big fellas up there trying to block him. Pat Lenore, 6'5", 285, that uh, right tackle for Tennessee. And Young is a small guy, 235. Vandy's got to do a lot of stunning up there. As you said, 235 for Young, the nose man. Lewis Woolridge is 219. Now, if there's a smaller nose tackle in Division I football, I don't know who it is. He's, but he's not a nose tackle. He's an eye tackle. <laughs> it's third down. Seven to go. Pickens in motion. Kelly back looking to Pickens. Got it to him at the 25. And the All-Americans got it to the 14-yard line. 16 yards. Kelly to Pickens. Now, you, everybody's scared of Carl Pickens. Now, watch number 31, Shelton Quarles, out here on the uh, right side of your screen. He's actually going to be sitting off the ball because he's afraid of where Carl Pickens is. Carl goes out, finds a little area in the zone, makes the reception, and then tries to run over Robert Davis, number 11. They mixed it up a little bit after the play. Pickens' first catch and a first down at the 13-yard line for Tennessee, leading by a touchdown. Here's Stewart. He ran into his own man, or he may have been off to the races. John Fisher out there trying to get a block. Stewart ran into him, went down. Short gain. It'll be second down and nine. You know, I'm sure John's going to go back to the huddle and say, hey, James, look, I'm up here blocking for you, buddy. <laughs> don't run up my back. So one thing offensive linemen don't like is for a running back to hit him in the back. You're already dealing with a guy that's 280 pounds on the other side. Here. Fisher, the center, number 51, and Myslinski, the guard, number 50, have played next to each other their entire careers. Well, that left side is a strong one for Tennessee. Play action. Kelly throws on the run. He got it too far in front of McCleskey on the far side. It'll be third and long. I tell you, the only thing that's stopping uh, Andy Kelly from being successful in the passing game is if he does not throw the ball correctly because the secondary of Vanderbilt is off so far in terms of their coverage that they can't get to a play and make a play defensively. They've got to wait until the receiver gets the ball. They're giving the Volunteers almost too much respect, aren't they, Dan? Yeah, they really are. You know, sometimes you got to get up in somebody's face to play them tough. Four wideouts this time. Phillips, a single setback. Third down and eight, Tennessee. And Vandy thinks about a blitz on Kelly, who reads it, directs his traffic, and goes to the end zone. To Corey Fleming. It's 13 to nothing. Not to take anything away from Corey, but I think I could have made that reception. <laughs> he came off the line of scrimmage and was never covered. As soon as Kelly made the adjustment at the line of scrimmage, he knew where he was going with the pass. And he got the touchdown. Next board, extra point, up and good. The Volunteers have had the football twice. And now with just under five minutes, 
to go in the first quarter. They have scored twice. Kelly to Fleming. It's 14 to nothing. Volunteer. Brad Nessler and Dan Jiggets in Knoxville where Tennessee all over Vanderbilt early. 14 to nothing. They've had the ball twice and scored twice. Chapman, who blasted his last kickoff, drops this one down to Harris at the two. Corey Harris across the 25. And he shows why he's an open field running back. Got it out to the 32-yard line where Steve Session made the hit on the special teams. And we got a penalty marker down at the end of the play. Yeah, I think the penalty's going to be on uh, Nazam Walter, who uh, had looked like a holding penalty down there on the, on the run back. Well, that negates a nice 30-yard return by Harris. He had a good block, but it was too good. 53-yard run, run last back. time for the Holding. touchdown in seven plays. We get another look Ten yards. at what counted it off. You see Kelly looking over to his left. That's where Fleming is already. And right now he reads it right off the blitz. He knows Fleming isn't covered. You see the secondary trying to collapse in there, but he's already five yards in the end zone uncovered. Tennessee has 14 points. Vanderbilt has run six offensive plays. This time from the 22. Marcus Wilson. And the first man is Thomas. Thomas across the 25, near the 27. Sean Walker, the senior linebacker from College Park, Georgia, in on the hit. If you're Vanderbilt, you've got this rushing attack that they have. One of the things you have to have is a great deal of patience. Jerry Donato has that. He's an old offensive lineman. He understands how long it takes to develop a running game. But uh, you've got to have patience and, and be successful. At least get three, four yards of a clip. If you don't, then you got to put the ball in the air, and that's trouble for Vanderbilt. Yeah, they can't go off their game this early. Second down and six from the 26 for the Commodores. On the eye bone, it's Wilson who keeps it this time. Broke a tackle, and he's in the open field. Carter saves a touchdown as Wilson got it all the way to the 42-yard line. 31 yards for Marcus Wilson. About uh, 10 yards away, Dale Carter looked like he was, he was looking for the handle on Marcus uh, Wilson. Watch Wilson, though, just find a little running area in here. He gets some good blocking up front. You see some been cut down up on the uh, defensive line there. Now he just cuts back against the grain, avoids a couple of tacklers there. A little shake move, gets a downfield block, and now just, he just fins off Dale Kelly. Kelly, as I said, was looking for the handle on him, and gradually he found it. Wilson showing why he's the number 10 rusher in the SEC. This is Thomas, the big guy inside. About a yard to the 41. Hey, uh, Brad, I want to tell you something else, too. What is happening up front is Vandy is trying to trap. And uh, what Tennessee's defensive line is doing, and that time you saw Shazan Bradley just slice down in. If you slant on those traps, you meet that trapping guard midway, then they can't run the play successfully because there's no hole. Vandy trails 14 to nothing. We've got 318 remaining first quarter. The lone wide receiver, Derek Gregg. Bandy with a second down and nine. Tennessee with a blitz. Wilson keeps it again. Near the 35, about three yards short of the first down. Ernest Field, the outside linebacker, made the stop. And, uh, Floyd Billy, number 22, was up from his secondary position right up on the line of scrimmage and had an opportunity to make the stop at the line of scrimmage and missed the tackle. And, uh, of course, Marcus Wilson will help you miss a tackle. Tennessee got geared up by playing Kentucky, and it was a close one in their last win, so they are a bit prepared for an option-type attack. But this eye bone gives you a little different feeling as a defensive player. There's no doubt about that. Third down and three for Vanderbilt. Look out from behind. Floyd Miley on the blitz from the secondary. Got to Wilson just as he let go of the ball. Floyd said, hey, look, yeah, you made me miss the last time. I got to get you back now. That's just, you know, common sense. Watch him come from the top of your, excuse me, on the right side of your screen. He's coming on the corner blitz all the way. Wilson doesn't see it, doesn't have a clue because his back is turned, and Miley gets in to put the pressure on and makes him throw the ball away. Harris trying to get a block, got a piece of Miley, but not enough. And the senior from Fort Lauderdale came storming in to put the pressure on Vanderbilt's quarterback. And Vandy's going to try a long kick. 
I mean long. Jeff Owen will try from 52. It's He's one out of two, and it's a fake. And penalty markers are all over the place. Clarence Civilian, number 17 on the fake field goal. It looked like Clarence tried to do the walk away. You know, he went to the sideline, looked like he was going off the field, and then just froze there on the sideline. Jerry Denardo says, wait a minute, guys, this is legal. <laughs> Jerry's going, excuse me, excuse me. <laughs> I don't know if that's going to get their attention. <laughs> and on the other side, a guy that's been around the SEC longer than any other active coach says it's going our way. And we find out in just a moment. Jimmy Harper's our referee. We have an ineligible. The man ran off the field, came back on. He's an and The ruling was that there was an ineligible receiver downfield. Now, Clarence Civilian is all the way out on, on the sideline and just kind of the snuck out end. there. Yeah. Uh, you know what you do is you run and look like you're going off to the sideline, and then you just freeze up right there along the sideline. And many times the, uh, the kick block team doesn't see it. Now the, the penalty came in for Vanderbilt. Lost it down. The first down to Tennessee. Well, it's first down Tennessee. Vandy thought they had another shot at it with their special teams. The ball goes over to the Volunteers, who already lead by 14. That's right. Those paces are hot right now. And the Pistons have been having their problems. Neyland Stadium in Knoxville, Tennessee, where the Volunteers lead 14-0. Penalty markers stop this play before it can get started. And there was uh, time left on the play clock, so it couldn't have been a delay a game. Dead ball, false start, movement on offensive line. See, you know, go back 15. to the last play when civilian was over on that sideline. You know, that's a legal play. Um, they said that, uh, you know, there was a receiver or a legal receiver downfield, and that has to be alignment. So uh, I would question that call. I'd like to hear further explanation of that, and maybe Brian Nuna can check with him at halftime and get something on that. At the 31-yard line, first and 15. Kelly, play fake, got some pressure, and now throws to a wide-open Faulkner who can't make the catch. Faulkner got turned around at midfield, went as high as he could, and couldn't quite pull that one down. Aaron Smith, the free safety, number 27 for Vandy, was coming all the way from, it looked like, the other side of the field. Now, let's see if we can see him at the bottom of the screen, but he's the free safety, 27. And he's going to try to cover Faulkner all the way over on the far sideline, and that's a long way to run for a free safety. That really is a cornerback position that should be covering that play. Here's, uh, again, another look at Faulkner over on the sideline. Craig Faulkner goes up, and that's just a little bit over his fingertips. Second and 15 for Kelly. They keep it on the ground, and... It's going to pay dividends as Phillips goes all the way to the 44-yard line. Second and 15, just pull out your average 13 or 14-yard gallop. Phillips, a freshman out of Nashville. That really rubs salt in Vandy's wounds, doesn't it? Well, you know, it's funny. When we're talking with Johnny Majors, he's talking about all the seniors he's going to lose, and we mentioned the freshman running backs. And you know, he says, yeah, but I, you know, I just have to keep replacing people because guys are leaving early, like Carl Pickens and all that. And you look at something like this, three solid running backs at the, you know, at the tailback position uh, for Tennessee. You as know you, he's reloaded. As you said to him, Coach, I'm really sorry to see you have no talent out here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and Andy Kelly's going to call a timeout. A penalty marker went down, I think, before he got that timeout called. Pat Lenore may have moved on the right Dead side ball. of the line, too. Ball start, movement, oh. offensive line. Right. Andy Kelly never saw that. He thought he had a timeout call before his right tackle move. Brad, you know my feeling on calling out those those linemen now on the penalties. Uh, you know, if you don't call those offensive linemen, I want to make those great blocks. Don't don't identify them on the penalty. Okay, now. I'll leave them alone. <laughs> so instead of third down and a couple, it's going to be third down, almost seven. See a smile. Increasing the face of the referee as Andy Kelly pleads his case. And Jimmy Harper said, oh, son, sorry. <laughs> we got the flag before you got the uh, before you got the timeout. Take a look at the Southeastern Conference standings. The Gators of Florida, SEC champs. Alabama surprised everyone coming back strong this year. Gene Stallings did a nice job down there. Tennessee at 4-2. Uh, Ray Goth at Georgia. 4-3 and uh, 
There's Vandy at three and three right now in the SEC. Vandy looks around their schedule and wonders what could have been. They lost 17-13 to Duke in a game that they had really in hand the whole way. They lost a heartbreaker, 24-22 to Auburn. And of course, then uh, beat Georgia, Ole Miss, Army, and Kentucky to get that four-game winning streak coming in here. So they had some very close ones. LSU, I should have mentioned, too. That was a two-point game. So they lost three games by a total of eight points, but they also have won three games by a total of eight <laughs> points. So maybe they fit in there where they belong right now. I saw uh, Kentucky at 0-7. I know your friend Bill Curry's been having a tough time this year. Yeah, it has. He's got a lot of young guys that he hopes are going to improve in a hurry next season. You see we've got 123 left in the quarter, and Tennessee leads by two touchdowns, and they face third down and seven. Kelly with time in and out of the hands of Fleming. Robbie Young on the coverage on the corner. And so for the first time today, Tennessee is going to have to give it up. That time Corey Fleming was open, but it was, it was before Andy Kelly unloaded the football. He actually threw it behind Fleming that time. That brings out the punting unit for Tennessee. And back deep is Robert Davis, starting defensive back. Hutton's kick. Davis will field at trouble with it and his knee down to make the catch. So that's blown dead right there at the 18-yard line. 43-yard kick and no return as Davis at the last minute had to make a little adjustment and the left knee was down. Here's today's days in SEC leaders and in rushing Corey Harris as we mentioned over a thousand yards coming in and needed uh, just 51 to become Vandy's all time single season leader. Yeah but look at number four and number six both those freshmen from uh, University of Tennessee that we talked about Stewart and Hayden and Hayden hasn't even carried the ball yet today. There's Harris number 22 the top man in SEC rushing he was actually listed number two on the depth chart in the preseason and he just flat worked his way into that number one position and now has a thousand yard year. That, look like, that looks like a typographical error now. The fullback Carlos Thomas close to the 20 that's it. Every time they've tried it straight up the middle Thomas has find the sledding tough against the front wall of Tennessee. Yeah because they're in a four man front and you know middle linebacker Sean Walker 45 steps up he makes the play either that or the two defensive tackle Surla, Surlis or uh, Bradley step in and make the stop. So it's tough running right up in the middle of a 43 defense. It's designed for you not to be successful in the middle. Smith and Mims, those two defensive ends you're talking about. Johnny Major says, I don't know if I've ever had a better tandem at defensive end than those two guys. And they are both seniors. Wilson on second and eight to throw. Got it in and out of the hands of Corey Harris on the far side. The problem with an eye bone, if you don't get it working, get the lead early and find yourself in a passing situation. These guys, Dan, just aren't used to the football coming their way that often. That's right. And for the first time in the last uh, four years, uh, Vanderbilt is behind going into, you know, into the uh, second quarter. And in these games against Tennessee, they've been ahead at the half the last four years. And now they've got to make a key adjustment, as you mentioned. You've got to start putting the ball in the air, finding some receivers downfield, and they have got to catch the football. Marcus Wilson not checking his watch. He's taking a look at that sweatband. It's got the plays on it. And let's see what he's come up with on third and nine. So far, Bandy Ofer on their third down conversions. Straight drop by Wilson. Wants to throw a screen and nobody home out there. Finally gets it intended for his tight end, Pat Akos, incomplete. And the Commodores will have to kick it away again. It looked to be a screen that never developed, Dan. Uh, you know, one of the reasons why is because... Uh, Tennessee had split their defensive end, their right defensive end wide, and that really disturbed the whole play because his rush lane is right where Wilson wants to throw the ball. Jerry DiNardo kind of scratching his head trying to get this offense in gear here in the first quarter. So far, Vandy, for the most part, has been three and out. And here's another out as Lawrence will kick it away. Carter back deep for Tennessee. with another long line drive. Carter with a chance at this one from the 34-yard line. Going the wrong way. Got about three yards on the return. Looked for something to develop, and it didn't. But Tennessee has the football back, and they've got a big lead. Seven seconds remaining in the quarter. Packed house at Neyland.
Neyland Stadium in Knoxville with, as you see, seven seconds left in the first quarter and a 14 to nothing volunteer advantage. Brad, when we talk to people here, you say, hey, wait a minute, the stadium says that, you know, they can hold 91. Where do they put the extra four or five? Well, in those end zones, down in the back of the teams and all the rest of that, they pack them in here any way they can to get to 95,000. And they are packed in today. Stewart, who's put on quite a show, has got another 10 yards before he's run out in the penalty marker at the end of the play. And that's going to be on Carl Pickens, number 15, down on that sideline. Had a nice little block there going on Robert Davis. But then he held on to it just a little bit too long. Held on to it. Did I say that? I'm sorry. There it is, holding. Stan called it. Pickens says, hey, I catch the ball. I don't have to block people. He had a pretty good block though, going, though. He was stalking him real good along that sideline. But when the guy During breaks the run, away from you, Holding offensive team, there'll be one play, one untimed down. When a defensive back breaks away from you, you have to let go of the cloth. Then, if they see the cloth <laughs> stretch, then you're gonna get the play. That's about the only thing Pickens hasn't done right in his stay at Tennessee. 6'3, 200 pounder has the option of coming back to Tennessee, but he's already stated he is leaving early and uh, will no doubt be a number one draft choice in the NFL next spring. You can catch a BB at midnight. <laughs> he comes out to the left side. One play before the end of the quarter. And it'll be Stewart again. And Stewart into the secondary. All the way to the 40 of Vanderbilt. 25-yard run again by Stewart, who's closing in on 100. And our first quarter has come to a close. And with it, another big gallop by James Stewart, a freshman out of Morristown, Tennessee. And look at him go. Back into Vandy territory. End of one in Knoxville, and it's been all volunteers. They lead by two touchdowns. Alabama here today, Tennessee by two touchdowns as we start the second quarter. Phillips straight ahead. And Brad, while we were in, the, in that uh, replay of the flashback, uh, there was a uh, dead ball foul of 15 yards against Vanderbilt. And that's why the ball started out on the 26 instead of the 41, uh, where it was just before we broke uh, for the end of the quarter. Vandy doesn't need that to go against them either. They've got enough to worry about with what the volunteers have done so far. It's been all Tennessee through the first quarter. We'll take a look at the stats of the first 15 minutes after this play. Play action by Kelly. He's got a man wide open. The Faulkner can't quite get there. Brad, they are not covering the slot receiver in the secondary of Vanderbilt. That's the second time that a slot receiver has been wide open on the play. They better make that adjustment in a hurry because as we take a look at our RCA first quarter statistics, as you would expect, been dominated by Tennessee, 168 total yards. Vanderbilt with one first down. Once again, though, one of the surprising things is Vanderbilt on time of possession is doing quite well, but if that doesn't complement you on the scoreboard, it doesn't make a bit of difference. Third down and eight. Kelly just missed a guy wide open. Phillips in motion out of the backfield. Kelly goes that way, and it is almost intercepted by Davis. Phillips trying to sneak out of that backfield, number 19, and good job defensively by Robert Davis, the sophomore out of Nashville. It really was. He stayed with him all the way. Uh, finally got some nice tight coverage man-to-man -man out there, and uh, watch him go up for the ball. And as you said, Brady, almost picks this one off, but Robert Davis stuck with his man like sweat down into the end zone and right there he almost gets this one so if you want to call it a moral victory for Vanderbilt and then they finally stop the Tennessee offense and now a 41 yard field goal attempt by John Bexport 14 out of 20 in the season on his field goals and he got this one so make it 15 of 21 for number 10. 41 yard field goal. Tax three more on for the Volunteers. 14 minutes, eight seconds to go in the half. It's 17 0 Tennessee. Tennessee adds to its lead 17 0 on a 41 yard field goal, capping a 40 yard drive. A big chunk of that drive, though, the dead ball 15 yard penalty. Been a lot to cheer about for the Tennessee fans and nothing to this point for Vanderbilt. Let's go down to Brian Nooner. Brian. You uh, mentioned time and time again that this place is filled to the brim. 95,000 screaming Tennessee fans. 
Now, if you look around, you can see that there's a second tier at, in every area of the stadium except for the north end zone. Actually, there's talk about building a second tier in that north end zone. If they would do so, that would bring the seating capacity to about 120,000, and that would make this Tennessee stadium the largest for college football. Yeah, but hey, Brian, the other thing they'll need is a subway to get everybody in and out of here. <laughs> Just a little bit intimidating already, much less with that many more seats on the far end. Vandy from its own 20, and it's Harris. And now he shows why he's the top rusher in the SEC as he goes close to eight yards before Daryl Hardy can bring him down. First time Vandy picking up some positive yardage in a while. Well, I think what they've got to do is, you know, punch a little bit inside, go a little bit outside, vary the yeah, attack. But uh, you've got to stay with the ground game. If that's what, you know, that's the only thing you've got in your arsenal, you've just simply got to stay with it and hope that you can drain the clock and keep the offense of Tennessee off the field. Second down at two. From the eyeball, Wilson with a pitch at the last second, and enough for a first down, it appears, for Harris, who got a foot in front of the marker before Carter got him out. And Vandy picks up its second first down of the day. In talking with Jerry DiNardo, he said uh, one thing about uh, his quarterback, uh, Marcus uh, Wilson. He said he makes great decisions uh, with the football and at the perimeter. You see him pitching out there just at the right second to try to get the first, uh, first down yardage. You've got to have a quarterback in this offense that makes good decisions. And so far, he's done that on the pitches. It's a good look at number two, Wilson. This time off play action in trouble, and down he goes. Daryl Hardy. He's their big play man, and he comes up with his second sack of the year. Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. Daryl Harris uh, Hardy said, no way. Here he comes, 87 from the back linebacker spot, the left linebacker spot, and he comes in for the sack. Hardy is senior out of Cincinnati and no doubt will have a career after the season is over. 6'3", 220. So just when Vandy got it going in the right direction, they lose 10 on the sack. And momentarily play halted as uh, they get rid of some of the confetti out there. And some groundskeeping out there. Hey, give that guy a... <laughs> Give that guy a cold drink when he gets to the sideline. <laughs> An overcast day in Knoxville. A threat of rain, but they tell us it's going to hold up till after the game's over. Tennessee's been raining all over the Commodore so far, 17 to nothing. On a draw, Harris. Got about six, maybe seven. Floyd Miley ran him out. You know, often we don't understand how important it is on play action, on fakes and draws and that type of thing, to stay with your fakes. And that time, Marcus Wilson did a nice thing. Watch him here on the draw. Watch him stay with his fake as he pulls back. It looks like he's got the ball. As a matter of fact, he's so good at it. If you see one of the outside linebackers rushing in to, to hit him in the back, then he realizes the ball is gone. That's Todd Kelly who came across thinking that uh, Wilson still had the ball. Well, you wouldn't think they need a play fake here. 13 yards to go on third down and a straight drop for Wilson. Pumps once, man covered. Now he's trying to get in the open field, but Hardy won't let it. Again, the big play man. Daryl Hardy's bringing it. You know, that time Wilson was calling for a block from his fullback, Carlos Thomas. Watch Carlos Thomas try. He's going out on the pass pattern. Wilson says, hey, block this guy, and then I can run, and I can get the first down. Right here, he pulls it down. Now, uh, Carlos Thomas, number 34, is going to be in front of him right there. He's signaling to him, block this guy back here. No, don't run down on the <laughs> pass. Block him. Too bad. Hardy's second big play of that series, and it forces another Vanderbilt punt. David Lawrence. He's been a busy punter. He blasted that one. Carter has to backpedal near the 15-yard line. Penalty markers down, and Carter no return after a kick of 51. Second punt of the day for Lawrence of 50-plus, and I think we've got a 
holding call to boot. Yeah, David Bennett uh, going down on the protection team. Uh, looks like he got an arm out there and was holding on to uh, one of the defensive men. Sure, you tell me to leave the lineman alone, then you pick out a poor guy on special teams. Clipping call. Yeah, he just had him in the back. He just, he just had his hands on him, though. It wasn't serious. Clock stop with 10 minutes, 37 seconds. The Tennessee Volunteers with a big lead, 17 to nothing. Tennessee has scored on three of its four possessions. This is their worst field position of the day, but here's a guy that can change that for them in a hurry. James Stewart out across the 13-yard line. You know, the emotional side of things, when you look at the seniors playing their last game here at, uh, at Tennessee at uh, Neyland Stadium, uh, along that offensive line for Tennessee, they've got some seniors, Bernard G uh, Daphne, number 75, Tom Myslinski, number 50, John Fisher, number 51, the center, and Pat Lenore, the uh, right tackle. And that's who Stewart runs behind this time. And going to be close to a first down with his forward progress. They knock him back inside the 15, but they have it spotted out very, very close to the first down, give or take about two feet. Tennessee, as we said, good field position for the most part. Now, this is the worst, but they're trying to work out of it, and they have taken advantage of most opportunities. You get that kind of field position, and you've got an offense like they've got. Uh, as a defense of uh, Vanderbilt, you know you're in a deep hole. Third down, a yard to go. I guess I'd give it to James Stewart if I was Tennessee. There you go. First down to the 21-yard line. Give him almost four more and give him 117 on the day on 15 carries. Well, there's his numbers, 114 on 15, excuse me, and including a touchdown. Talking with uh, running backs coach uh, Charlie Coe here at Tennessee, he said that the most difficult thing about getting these uh, sensational runners is that you know, they've had a lot of running backs leave on them in the last couple of years early, so you always have to keep restocking, and uh, it's hard to convince young recruits to come here when you have all those freshmen. Reggie Cobb and Chuck Webb and a list of great backs, and this guy is going to fit into that category, it appears, before his stay is done in Knoxville. The Stewart carries again out to the 25. Why so glum? Your team's up 17 to nothing. <laughs> <laughs> she, she's mad about that last field goal. She, should, I guess she so. thought that should have been a touchdown. <laughs> James Stewart, quite a performance. Well over 100 yards and a score already on the afternoon. And the Volunteers are pretty much done whatever they've wanted to do. Second and seven, just inside the 25. Kelly, a nice play fake. He's all alone as he throws on the run to Faulkner. Faulkner a first down, knocked out at the 38-yard line by Robbie Young, but Faulkner's got another 13-yard pickup, his third catch of the day. Craig Faulkner reminds me a lot of another guy to play down here, Carl Parker, who's playing in the World League of American Football, and that he's not only got uh, good speed, but he's got great hands and the ability to find the open area, make the reception once he gets down there, and gain some extra yardage. Faulkner's just done a nice job today. He's a sophomore wide receiver. Richmond, Kentucky. At the 38-yard line, Kelly lines his troops up, leading 17 to nothing. Audible's at the line. Stewart goes a bit deeper as the tailback in the eye and then comes forward, ran into his own man again. And Alan Young helped the cause. Young and Quarles on that side have made a lot of Vanderbilt's tackles on the day. Pickup of about a yard for Stewart. And it'll be second and nine. 8.05 to go in the half. Tennessee with a 17 to nothing lead for Johnny Majors. The quick pass out to Faulkner. Waiting for a block. And he won't even need it. Almost got the first down on his own. Robert Davis upended him. Faulkner got about seven on the catch, though. Did you see Faulkner, though, use the block out there by J.J. McCleskey, almost like a pick, like a rub play, where he came back behind him and tried to shake the uh, defender off on his other receiver. Number four has four catches now on the day, 31 for the season. There's McCleskey, the other wide out, trying to give him some help. Tennessee brings in only one wide receiver as they load up the front wall on third down and less than a yard. And a big opening and a first down. 
near midfield, Aaron Hayden. That hole closed in a hurry, but he popped through enough to get the first down out near the 50. That's the first time, I believe, isn't it, Dan, that uh, Aaron Hayden's carried the ball today. Smokey likes it. <laughs> Smokey says, hey, I want to carry a couple out there. <laughs> Hayden now in to give Stewart a breather. Why not? Stewart's got 120 yards already. Tennessee with 13 first downs. Right at the 49-yard line. And here's Hayden. And he's dropped at the line, maybe for a loss, in fact. And it's Lewis Woolridge, that minute nose tackle, if you will. Normal person being 6'1", 219, is considered a pretty good-sized person, but not at nose tackle. <laughs> yeah, usually that, that one and that nine is switched around. He's 291. Uh, but uh, one of the things that we mentioned before is that they move around a lot and they like the slant and this time they get off the blocks in the middle and you see right there Lewis Woolridge slips off a double team and gets in to make the stop in the backfield. Second and 11 for the Vols. There's a good look at him up front in the gap between Tennessee center and right guard. Kelly play action. Plenty of time. Deep middle to Faulkner. the day Craig Faulkner's having 29 yards that time I tell you though anytime the quarterback battery along with the uh, with the wide receivers is successful it's because you're getting good blocking up front this time Andy Kelly gets good blocking his fullback Mario Brunson right there takes uh, quarrels out of the picture and then Faulkner's wide open again he's a slot receiver if you don't cover that slot receiver he slashes across that middle he's gonna burn you all day if you're playing zone somebody's gonna come out of that zone and stay with him 29-yard pickup, and Faulkner having a gigantic day. Here's Hayden on the toss, down near the 20. Zam Walter from the secondary made the tackle. As we work our way down to 5.20 to play in the first half, Brad Nessler and Dan Jiggett's with you at Neyland Stadium in Knoxville where Johnny Majors is looking for his 111th victory as head coach of the Volunteers. These Volunteers are headed to the Fiesta Bowl down in Phoenix. They'll take on Penn State and Joe Paterno. That'll be a good matchup. Here's Hayden trying to bounce outside. Robbie Young won't let him go. And he's short of the first down. So it's going to be third to about three. You know, one of the interesting things that can happen in a ball game when it's getting out of hand a little bit against uh, a team like Vanderbilt is that uh, if you're Tennessee and you kind of lose your focus, you know, you, you kind of think, hey, we're going to roll over these guys. Then all of a sudden they get that rushing attack going and, uh, you know, they're able to maintain the clock and, and get a couple of scores. Then all of a sudden you're in trouble. So Tennessee's got to stay focused here in this uh, first half. And this class, the senior class of volunteers, has never been up over Vanderbilt at halftime but they're going to have a halftime lead today. Here's Hayden. Cuts back. First down to the 11-yard line. Aaron Hayden. Nice cutback. And, and what that means is that uh, up front, everybody's staying with their blocks, front side and on the back side of the play, and that allows the running backs to make these kinds of decisions. They're able to run to daylight, find an open area, come back against the grain. Good look at the freshman from Detroit. Got it to the 11-yard line. First and 10. Balls can get a first down without a touchdown. Hayden sandwiched at about the 9. Quarles came from the outside. Rod Keith from the inside. And a man down is Quarles, who was in on the tackle. You know, we talked about the fact that Vandy has never had a three-week gap between games. Dan, do you think that hurt them coming into this one? I think so. It's hard to get your timing back. You know, there's a difference in timing between practice and game timing. Game timing is about twice as fast as practice timing is. Second and eight at the nine-yard line. Mark Adams, the tight end, sets up on the right side. Hayden trying to go the other way, and John DeWitt, the sophomore defensive end, made the initial hit. And it'll bring up third down and long. Oh, what a nice play by John DeWitt, though. He slips off the block and gets squared up and makes the stop. Watch him on the left side of your screen. Slip the block of the offensive guard right there. Gets off the block and it makes the stop. He got away from uh, Tom Myslinski. 
who is the left guard for Tennessee. You've got to remember that that bandy defense has absolutely been on the field the whole game. You see DeWitt trying to suck up a little bit of air as Tennessee brings it up with a third down and nine. Ball at the 10 yard line. 15th play of the drive coming up and number 15 Pickens in motion. Kelly looks that way to the end zone incomplete intended for Fleming Fleming out there with Pickens in the general vicinity incomplete and it'll bring out the kicking unit for the volunteers good coverage that time provided by Gary Rogers linebacker 63208 junior out of Cincinnati Ohio number 41 for Vandy John Bexward in Kelly, the quarterback, to hold. Next board already with a 41-yarder to his credit today. This will be a 27-yard field goal attempt. And Kelly on the fake. Pulls it up, throws to the end zone. Touchdown! to Shazan Bradley. Touchdown, Volunteer. Bexport this time will kick it. And got it. Well, Tennessee kept their focus. This is, looks like a this looks like a fake all the way because watch Kelly never really looks like he wants to put it down. Tap, taps it right there, goes out. Bradley's open right now. He goes up. The ball is almost tipped. He grabs it, and Shazam goes Shazam. Uh -huh. Here's another look at Kelly rolling out. Finds a receiver on the run. Shazam. Everything going right for the Volunteers. They just capped a 92-yard drive. We'll take another look at that fake field goal for a touchdown after Chapman's kick. And again, he drops it in the end zone. Harris will down it there. And he will work from its own 20-yard line. Here's the end zone look, Dan. Yeah, and uh, again, Shazan Bradley is the is a linebacker now, so it's unusual for defensive uh, people to get their hands on the ball. And there he double clutches the thing, but he grabs and looks at when he gets it in those mitts, it's not going to get away. And there's Andy Kelly over that sideline. He says, hey, I got another TD pass. Two on the day for Kelly. Bradley took that football, by the way. I don't think he's given it up yet. No, that rock's going home. <laughs> <laughs> and there's the drive. How about 17, 92, and over eight minutes? Marcus Wilson. Pitch at the last instant. And this was almost a Vanderbilt touchdown. You've got to give Chris Mims credit for hanging with that player. Harris is off to the races. 33 yards as it is, and Wilson tossed it to number 22 at the very last second. I talked about Wilson making good decisions at the perimeter with the ball, and watch this decision here. Just in time, pitches it at just the right moment, right there, gets it back to Harris, and Harris is within a breath of breaking this thing all the way. Right there, Mims gets the shoelace tackle. Mims, 6'6", 261. Can he move for a defensive end or what? Incomplete. Wilson intended the pass for Corey Harris. It'll be second and 10 at the Tennessee 47-yard line. You know, you look at a guy like Mims, you, you figure he's going to be a high-round selection because of the fact that he's big and he's very mobile. He's that correct size for outside linebacker, defensive end that everyone is looking for in the NFL now, 6'6", 261. Marcus Wilson has thrown only 45 passes coming into this football game. He's 0 for 6 today. And obviously trailing 24 to nothing. He's not done throwing it yet. Play fake. In trouble. Down he goes. Mark Fletcher. Another Tennessee sack. And Fletcher came from the secondary. Well, what they're trying to do is mix up some looks. They realize now that this is one of the ways you can shut down this, this eye bone attack is if you get some people in the secondary up in the face of the quarterback. And this time... Wilson's just not used to looking at a lot of blitzes, I don't think, and then tries to set up in the middle. No such luck. Loss of eight. It is third and 18. A 
Pecos, the tight end, just got off the field in time as Wilson drops. He's got pressure again. Buys himself some time and completes the pass to Harris. Back to the original line of scrimmage. That time he had to uh, jump over his center, uh, Kevin Brothen. And Brothen is uh, number 50, 70, 6'2", 286 pounds. And I don't know how Wilson got over those arms of Brothen. <laughs> You told me you were checking him out before the game. Oh, Got some man. guns. Huh? He's loaded. <laughs> Watch here as Wilson makes the escape here. Now he's going to go back, try to set up, realizes that he's in trouble because some pressure's coming from the, re the uh, left, his right side, excuse me, and he jumps over his center and fires. And it's complete to Harris downfield. Back to basically the original line of scrimmage, a little bit past that. And it's fourth down and a long nine for Vandy. Jerry DiNardo with 35 seconds left in the clock running. Is going to take the delay a game penalty as he runs it down to 35 seconds. Now he brings out his punting unit. Didn't want Tennessee to have much time to work offensively, and that's a smart move because everything Tennessee's done on offense today has worked. Lawrence to punt. And the Tennessee is playing for the fake. They don't want any kind of a fake here to see this. Nobody back deep right now. Fletcher's about the deepest guy, and he's only about 10 yards, 12 yards off the line of scrimmage. And Lawrence will kick. Trying to drop one down inside the 10. I don't think his coverage unit's going to have enough time. They won't. Touchback. With 25 seconds to play in the half. It's been all volunteers. Fiesta Bowl bound and leading by 24. Tennessee with a 24 to nothing lead with 25 seconds left. Shazan Bradley scored the last touchdown for Tennessee. Look at him. He's over there. I'm on offense now, guys. I'm on offense. <laughs> His offense on the field, and Kelly will take a knee. And that, for all practical purposes, will end the first half. The Volunteers head off the field in an unfamiliar position for this group. They've never led Vandy at halftime. And boy, do they lead him in this one. With a 24 to nothing cushion. And the good thing for Johnny Majors is he gets in, in the second half, if they continue this way, he gets a chance to let some of his younger people play and get some game experience. Johnny's working his way toward Brian Nooner down on the field in the end zone. And let's go down to him right now. Brian? Thanks, Brad. With me, Tennessee head coach Johnny Majors. Coach, the last four years at this time at intermission, Vanderbilt enjoyed a lead, but now you own a 24 to nothing advantage. You have to like being on this side this time. Well, I like it. I just wish the ball game were over right now. I'd be real happy. But we're playing very well. I think we're playing about as well as we can play. Uh, I just hope we keep that up and come back and attack the start of the second half. That's very important. Your defense is playing extremely well. Only one first down in the first half. Uh, shutting down and taking away the clock from Vanderbilt. Yes, that, that, that's a, a magnificent job they're doing so far. Again, I hope they don't forget how they got there and keep it up. And that's always a big factor. Your defense controlling people and giving us a chance. And then our offense is uh, executed very well for the first 30 minutes. I want to ask you about the two fake field goals. Theirs doesn't work because of the penalty. Yours does and counts for six. Well, I'm very happy about that. I like that top swing in it. I mean, I have it. Did uh, Coach Denardo give you an idea when he threw that, uh, that fake in there? Oh, I had the idea already. We had the idea in our game plan. All right. Thanks a lot, Coach. Says he had Coach Johnny Major. Let's uh, send it to break. We'll be back with more halftime action. For 70 years, They've given form and substance to an automotive vision. Now, four generations of BMW engineers present their life's work. The 12-cylinder 850i. If a car company can have a soul, this is ours. The RCA projection screen is so big you'll feel like part of the show when you watch the RCA home theater. It also has Dolby surround sound that's so real Stand back, everyone. you'll forget you're sitting at home. Let me handle this. The RCA home theater also has picks in picks. It lets you watch two things at once in color. Another way RCA is changing entertainment again. 
Andy Kelly with two touchdown passes, one off a of fake field goal, and James Stewart well over 100 yards and a score on the ground for Tennessee. You throw in a field goal, they've totally dominated the Vanderbilt Commodores. Halftime at Neyland Stadium in Knoxville, the Volunteers lead it 24 to nothing. With Dan Jiggetts, I'm Brad Nessler back at Neyland Stadium in Knoxville. The fans on their feet, their Volunteers lead Jerry Donardo's Commodores 24 to nothing. I know Brian Nuna tried to get a hold of Jerry Donato down there on that sideline, and Jerry says, I got more important things to do. Got to find some offense. You have to wonder. You go way back to about 15 minutes before kickoff. Tennessee had to have been fired up coming right out of the gates after the fight that broke out well before player introductions. And they have never looked back. Dale Carter on the kickoff return out to about the 24-yard line. That's where Tennessee will work. Kelly with a couple of touchdown passes already on the day with some final words. He's got his 15th, 14th and 15th touchdowns today. And on his career, 36 touchdown passes here in this yeah. Southeastern Conference career that's been brilliant for him. And in the first half, really, uh, we did not hear a lot from Carl Pickens, surprisingly enough. We heard a lot from this guy, James Stewart. Out to about the 26-yard line. Stewart in the first half, 120 yards on 17 carries. And he picked up two more, second down and eight. From the 26 yard line play action for Kelly plenty of time Stewart out of the backfield out to the 32 yard line short of the first down Gary Rogers made the stop that time Pickens was going long Stewart comes out underneath and coming to the sideline and he was wide open because the inside linebacker has to cover that running back coming to the sideline Pickens only has one catch for 16 yards they were asking where it was he now Watch Stewart here slide up through the line of scrimmage off the play action and then just break very quickly to the sideline and you'll see the linebacker Rogers come from inside out. Three wide receiver group for Tennessee. They keep it on the ground though. It's Stewart. First down. Second effort got him across the 35 and I think that's good enough. So James Stewart with a first down carry. And Tennessee has had really nothing go wrong today. And you've got to wonder if Vanderbilt can somehow force a volunteer miscue just to try to get back in the football game. Nice play fake. There's the turnover. And Charles has got it at the 21-yard line. Jump quarrels, levels Kelly, and that's the first time the ball's been loose today. Brad, you must be clairvoyant. <laughs> because uh, Quarles just came on a blitz from the outside. He's an outside linebacker, number 31. And watch Kelly never even sees him. Gets it right in the back of the head, fumbles the ball, and then Quarles is uh, alert enough to go in and pick the ball up and recover the fumble. Now the Tennessee crowd comes to life for the defense. Harris, he might score right here. Down to the five. Carter knocked him out of bounds. Oh. Dale Carter rearranged those twos on his chest. <laughs> he got it right in the middle of the chest and stuck him. Nice run, though, by Harris. Harris got it first and goal at the four-yard line. Vanderbilt only their fourth first down. Loose ball. Derek Payne covered that, and I don't think 
the center and quarterback can even hear each other. That's jump. right. It looked like uh, Marcus Wilson wanted to check off, go to an audible. That's one thing that Jared Donato says he does extremely well. But when you go to that audible, usually you switch the snap count. There, he just didn't get the handle on the ball. And fortunately for him, it's recovered by his own teammate. And when you try to audible in this stadium, forget it. Forget about it. Here they come again. The fans, that is. Second and goal. Payne to the one. Dale Carter with another tackle. Brad, Dale Carter is serving everybody coming up from his safety position. He's really making some key stops back there in the secondary. Watch him here prevent the touchdown. He's a finalist for the Thorpe Award for the best defensive back in the country, and that's the reason right there. Watch Dale Carter skating right along that goal line. There he delivers the knockout drop. Third and goal at the one. Wilson goes down. Zon Bradley, the nose tackle. Watch him slant in here, defensive tackle. And right now, he grabs Wilson, throws him to the turf. That was the key play. Fourth and goal. You'll know in a moment if Vanderbilt scores by the silence. Tennessee's defense has stopped Vandy inches shy. Chuck Smith. Ground level. Let's see if Chuck Smith, number 56, is one of those guys in on the stop. Right there, he's pushing the running back back out of the end zone. They say no score. Vandy says, yeah, we got in. You cannot see the goal line from that picture, though. Another look at it. Mario Brunson goes up over the top. Inside is number 24. That's uh, Derek Payne. And Payne tries to slip in between uh, left guard and left tackle. Remember, the goal line is the front of that white line, not the back. Kelly on a quarterback sneak to about the three-yard line. I tell you what, I'm not so sure. I don't think Payne was oh, in. Oh, boy. There. I know if they'd like to have a review on that one. But this is not the NFL. Tennessee with the lead with 11.24 to go third quarter, 24 to nothing. And obviously this is their worst field position of the day. As well, you get Vandy. a look behind Phillips, who will carry and got to the five. I was going to say, Brad, with uh, Tennessee working out of their own end zone, Vandy could hope for a safety and maybe get the ball back on the free kick. But now that they've got a little breathing room, I, I don't think it's there. Shelton Quarles, who forced a fumble moments ago, shaken up on the play. And slow to get up, but apparently he'll stay in there. Now the officials are going to have a look to make sure he's all right. Quarles, who's been in on so many tackles for Vanderbilt. There's a good look at Shelton. Sophomore linebacker. Let's go back a couple of plays one more time to get a look at what was so close for Vanderbilt. Keep in mind, you've got to get across the front edge of the goal line. That's the front edge of that white line. Nice fake there by Brunson over the top. And then comes Derek Payne. And see if he gets across that goal line. I'll tell you what, he's covered up so well by number 56, Chuck Smith, that you really can't tell from that picture. I think they say his knee touched down before he touched down. Phillips outside. He's still on his feet. Aaron Smith ran him out of bounds. He picked up 13. He got a pancake block over there, too, from his tight end. That's number 84, uh, Jerry Teal. Watch at the end of this play right here. You're going to see a pancake block, and that's what those offensive linemen and tight ends love to get when you see that defensive lineman or defensive back go down on their backs. That was Mark Adams, and he did level his man. There he is, number 84, first down, Tennessee. It's Phillips the other way this time. 
and he got double teamed at the 17 yard line. Woolridge and Collins are there. Phillips in there with Stewart already have a adding, having had a banner day, and now Phillips doing the job for the tailback spot. And, and it took that last drive by Vanderbilt to really snap Tennessee out of that. Maybe those little doldrums that you get into at the half when you go ahead 24 zip. Vandy thinks about a blitz. Phillips. Boy, you can hear the pads popping way up here. Rod Keith, the inside linebacker. Probably Vandy's best defensive player. Yeah, they're starting to give those pads the punch test right now. <laughs> Second team all SEC player a year ago. Yeah, he'll play in a blue-gray game, a couple of postseason ball games, and out of Hueytown, Alabama. Third down and nine. Reeves, the tight end, sets on the left side. A little delay, draw play, and Hayden's got a first down. How many young running backs can we continue to watch play this game? Stewart, Hayden, Phillips, you name them. 11 yards, first down. I think they might be off the depth chart now. I'll tell you one thing, too, though. That, uh, that offensive line for Tennessee is doing a nice job of blocking up front. Aaron Haight, who actually is the number five rusher in the SEC, has seen limited duty today because Stewart has played so well and Phillips has played so well. But here he comes again on a counter out to the 35-yard line. Shelton Quarles, who was shaken up earlier, in on another tackle. Say what the you know we talk about linemen liking you know they like to do things that where they can get to move around a little bit on that last play John Fisher the center 51 watch him comes around on a little C block you see he gets to move around a little a little pulling there to try to get the linebacker and, and cut him off that makes you feel like you know you have some speed <laughs> you love those linemen second and six Hayden's loving his lineman right now, too. Aaron Smith brought him down in the secondary, but Hayden rips it off to the 45-yard line. Another Tennessee first down. Hayden was the other uh, part of that duo of running backs, the freshman running backs that we talked about. And obviously, he's got that explosion and upfield speed, just like James Stewart does. First and 10 for the balls at their own 45 yard line. They lead this one 24 to nothing with under eight minutes to go third quarter. Again, the counter to hate. Knocked out at the 49 yard line by Robbie Young. Brad, you want to see a good defensive play, watch Robbie Young on that play. That's the way the corner is supposed to play the perimeter. He stretches the play from about the hash marks all the way out to the sideline. Here's another look at it. Now watch Robbie Young come up from his corner position, left corner, and just force this play all the way outside. Because right now he's coming up on the hash marks, and he's just going to play it, play it, play it, string it out, and get the running back all the way to the out of to, all the way out of bounds. Phillips, he might go. Phillips to the seventh. says you stopped me the first time but now I'm going to try that right side one more time and here he breaks past Robbie Young Young tries to get in on the tackle slips off and Phillips is just gone on this play if he avoids one tackler downfield he's in the end zone for six points right there he makes a little move and then runs into uh, Aaron Smith number 27 first and goal Tennessee at the Vandy eight yard line Stewart touchdown
Bexford's extra point is good. And Tennessee takes it the length, and I mean the length of the field, for another touchdown. James Stewart goes out, a pilgrim. Now watch number 11, Robert Davis, come up in the secondary. Watch that move there. Good block as well, but then Davis is going to be sitting around looking at the highlight field because, hey, Stewart's in the end zone. Good punishing running there just to take it right on into the end zone for the score. 99 yards and a touchdown, Tennessee. 31 to nothing, Tennessee. And here's another look at their last touchdown, Dan. And watch the block by Kenneth Campbell, number 29. Right there. That takes Davis out of the picture and allows Stewart to break free and finally punish the linebacker, Rogers, going into the end zone. So Stewart, who saw Phillips spell him most of that drive, Phillips had a 44-yard run to get it close. Stewart did the rest. And Chapman's kick again. Six yards deep. And Vandy works from its own 20. Boy, this kid's a weapon. The opposing teams can't start from anything but their own 20 the way he kicks off. I don't think scoring drives come much better than this one. That's what you would call complete. 11 plays, 99 yards, and you burn up almost five minutes off the clock as well. First and 10, Vanderbilt. Chalmers into the Vandy backfield as the fullback. Little screen play to Chalmers. Hardy and Fuller are there. Hardy makes the play outside, but Shazan Bradley made the play inside by beating two blocks, keeping the pressure on the quarterback so he can never set up on the screen. A loss of two. Second and 12. Back to the eye bone, and Wilson, not known for his passing, pitches to Harris. Harris to the 24, maybe the 25. Dale Carter knocked him out of bounds. I don't know that eye bone's been the T-bone today because Tennessee has feasted on They sure are chewing on it, aren't they? And Carter, a Kodak All-American, he's going to make everybody's All-American list. What a season he's had. With that last run, Corey Harris is the new single season rushing leader in Vanderbilt history. Play fake by Wilson. And a completion and a first down to Clarence Civilian out to the 42 yard line. 18 yard pass play. Miley made the hit. One of the things that uh, Jerry Donato said he wanted to accomplish in this game was take the crowd out of the game. Well, these are the kind of plays that do it because you heard the roar from that crowd that died down after this big play to Clarence Civilian. First down by passing the first for Vandy today. At the 42-yard line, penalty markers down. Wilson broke a tackle, and he's close to another first down. But again, a marker at the 40-yard line. Maybe a holding call against the Commodores. Let's wait and see. Vanderbilt saying it's against Tennessee. <laughs> and they are right. <laughs> That's all that they would say. <laughs> While they sort this out, let's go to Brian on the sideline. Brian? Brad, you know, out in Denver at Mile High Stadium, when the fans cheer, it's called Rocky Mountain Thunder. Well, we're in Smoky Mountain country right here. And let me tell you, during that last offensive drive, I'm not so sure what they call it, if it's called Smoky Mountain Thunder, but let me tell you, it was very loud, and I think it registered on the Richter scale. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say they call that an earthquake. You could see our camera shaking because the whole building was shaking. And when you've got 95,000, which is about what we've got today, 94, 976, when they get into the act, you can see what happens. Vandy with a first down in Tennessee territory. Harris waits for his blockers, 
Got a couple to the 45, maybe the 44. So Harris has worked for his 70 yards plus on the ground today. Yeah, but the one thing you know about the Tennessee's defense, if you wait and he who hesitates is lost, you cannot hesitate against this defense because they've got good overall team speed. Mim, 6'6", 261, and he's run down some guys from behind already today. They were, if he were any better, he'd be illegal. He was a junior college transfer. Missed three games to start last year, and he's come on so strong since then. Play action. Wilson in trouble. Down he goes. Guess who? Yeah, but Mims ought to share that uh, that sack this time with Chuck Smith, number 56, coming from the other side. Because Smith had the backside pressure that really flushes out Wilson. Now, you'll see Smith up at the top of your screen coming in with the backside pressure. Right there, chases the quarterback, Wilson, out of the pocket. And then Mims gets in for the stop. Mims' sixth sack of the year. And Smith on the other end, the bookends, if you will, as Dan said, forced the play. Johnny Majors, as we told you earlier in the game, says, I don't think I've had a better pair the outside than those two. Three wide out offense for Vanderbilt. And the draw, Harris got inside and spun his way to the 38-yard line. He's about a yard short of a first down. That was on third and ten. So let's see what Coach DiNardo wants to do now. It looks like it's going to be fourth and a yard. This was a tough run by Harris. You want to know why the guy leads the SEC in rushing? Watch this run here because this is all hard, hard running right here. A couple of slide moves there, back up inside, and then just strains to get to that first down yardage, twisting and turning, trying to get there. Almost two yards to go on fourth down for Vanderbilt. Pain in motion. Wilson will keep it. I don't know. Awfully close. Maybe close enough to have a look. Hardy, one of the volunteers there, along with Kerry Bailey to combine on the tackle. Tough to go out wide when you only have that short yardage situation. You only need two yards. You're pulling a guard outside there as well. There's too many people out there, too much traffic. You have to keep it simple on the short yardage. I don't think we've had a measurement all day, but we're about to have one, and Vandy hoping that goes their way. They trail 31 to nothing. They had to dust off the sticks. And Vandy got it, I think. Oh, maybe not. They're trying to straighten the chain. Vandy's players trying to give him some help. I Kevin, the uh, bro that the center tried to help out, wasn't enough help. How did they, they were short by how many links? Nine links? 31 to nothing on the link side for Tennessee. Tennessee with a big lead, still slinging it. And Faulkner's got another catch. Got about 10 and then got leveled out of bounds by Quarles. And Quarles is still down. That's Craig Faulkner's uh, sixth catch of the day. He's been Andy Kelly's favorite target on the day. And Pickens has been quiet. And some of it may be due to the fact that Vandy's trying to double up on Pickens and it's left Faulkner wide open many times. But I mean, nobody in the picture. So Shelton Quarles there, number 31 for Vandy, holding his hand. Second and short, give it to Stewart. Gave some ground, still got a first down. Robert Davis from the secondary. <laughs> Davis comes over to give uh, somebody on the sideline a high five. Well, you know, one of the things is you compete hard, you play hard, and uh, you respect your opponent, but, uh, especially if they're giving you a nice, tough ball game. Reggie Ingram over there on the sideline, the guy that... Davis went over and smiled, still smiling at. How about Stewart? 21 carries, 136 yards, two touchdowns. Not a bad day, and he's not done yet. Stewart cuts back. Penalty marker down. He got to the 40. Give him 10 more, but a flag down. Davis made another tackle. You know it's a bad day when you're secondary or you're leading tacklers. That's right. Top block on Tennessee, apparently. We'll bring it back. James Stewart. Have a breather. <laughs> Gonna go with the lock. 
blocking below the way. Offensive team, 15 yard penalty. He's got to go over and let that turbo cool off. You know, you always have to rest those turbos after you run them hard. He's had it revved up today. This is a major penalty. 15 yarder walked off against Tennessee with 238 to go in the third quarter. John Bexport, the freshman kicker, warming up on the sideline, hoping to get another chance. Kind of unusual for Tennessee to have two freshman kickers, a kicker and a punter. That was back a long time since they've had that kind of combination. Here's the give and a big opening for Hayden in the secondary. To the 32-yard line. 26 yards for Hayden. Is it possible we could end up with three 100-yard backs before this is all over? You know, it, it, that's very possible. And then one of the things you want to look for, too, though, John Fisher, the center, knows he's playing in his last game here. And watch number 51, John Fisher, come around on a, on a block, on a C block. Now, there's Davis in the secondary for Vanderbilt, still playing hard, still down there trying to make some stops. And it's tough folks when you're down 31 to zip he makes a stop down there but it was a real nice block on the offensive line by John Fisher and around coming this is Ronald Davis Davis touchdown could do no wrong. Talked about Johnny Majors pulling some of those people off the bench and giving them a chance to play. Ronald Davis is a freshman. Parkland, Tennessee. Next sports, extra point is good. We get another look. With 1.49 to go in the third quarter, and the Volunteers have done everything well, including a 32-yard reverse and six more for Tennessee. 1.49 to play in the third, the Volunteers by 38. A happy Ronald Davis on the sideline with a 32-yard end around for a score. On the other side, Jerry Donato searching that notebook for something. And today is Commodores trailing 38 to nothing with 149 to play in the third. Harris touches it down, and Vandy will work from its own 28-yard line. The last scoring drive for Tennessee, 62 yards in five plays. They've had them about all lengths today, Dan. Yeah, they, they've got all kings in the checkerboard in the end zone right now. And uh you know, you look at the other side of Vanderbilt, and what do you do if you're down like this? And You know, it's easy mentally to get down and get depressed in a game like this, but you just stay in there, you hang in there, and you do the best you can because, number one, you're going to have to go back and watch some game tape, but also, it's for pride now. They had hoped for a winning season, and unless they've got a 38-point miracle in their pocket in the next quarter, They'll be five and six when the season's done, but they're still working at it. The quarterback draw works pretty well for Wilson out near the 30-yard line. Ernest Fields made the tackle. Tennessee has Mike Healy. No, nope, not Healy. That's Schuler. Schuler is Schuler working up. up. Yeah, he's uh, the heir apparent at the quarterback position. A freshman, 6'3", 202, out of Bayshore, South Carolina. The high school All-American and one of the top quarterbacks in the country. I think we'll be talking a lot more about him in the next 15 minutes or so. From the 31 yard line, first down, Vanderbilt. Wilson play action, in trouble again from the back side and down he goes again. This time it's James Wilson. Wilson in there to give Mims a little breather. Just take out one, put in another. <laughs> We talked about Johnny Majors reloading. Well, there you have it. But, uh, you know, to get back to Vanderbilt, I think one of the things that uh, Jerry Donato's trying to do is build some character on this team. And this is one of the hard times to build that kind of character because when you get smoked in a game like this, you know, you really test, uh, test your mettle. Yeah, it's pretty easy to win. Yeah, it's easy to be happy on that sideline when you're winning. Second and 13. 
Wilson going deep. Only man there is Carter. His fourth interception of the year. He's a Thorpe finalist, too. Earlier we told you how he can hit. Well, this was not a good pass, but he knows how to get his hands on the ball, you know, too. It looked like Wilson and, and the receiver, you know, the left hand didn't know what the right hand was doing because Wilson goes to his left. The receiver broke right, and uh, Carter's playing center field there and just comes over and snags it. Kind of reminded us of a play that we saw a couple weeks ago in the NFL with Deion Sanders. Right. Just gently came over and just floated it in there and took it away. Carter, all SEC last year with five interceptions. Now he's got four this year. Got it back to the 49. That's where the offense will work. And Hayden off to the races. To the 38-yard line, first down. Aaron Smith made the stop. You know, you had a good point there, maybe about having three running backs with over 100 yards. Schuler in at quarterback. Andy Kelly, his career on this field is done. And listen to the ovation. There might be a tear somewhere under that helmet. We played three, and it's all Tennessee. Andy Kelly, all-time leader in attempts, completions, yardage, touchdown passes. Two more scores today. His regular season over as a volunteer and the heir apparent in at the controls. He's Schuler. Aaron Hayden cuts outside. Oh, what a collision on Scott Walker in the secondary. He got about 13 more. Just to go back to Andy Kelly, though, it's been a job well done here at Tennessee. It's the way you like to go out on top. Well done, Andy. Riding high and looking good. We talked about the possibility of 300-yard backs. It's not that far-fetched, folks. Hayden now has 94 on 14 carries. Stewart's taking a rest with 144 and two touchdowns. And Phillips has 74, and we'll see him before it's over. Hayden, right side, nice shoestring tackle to keep Hayden from picking up more big yardage. Robbie Young, Young and Davis, the two corners have really worked hard on that Vandy secondary. They certainly have. They had a lot of things going by them, and uh, it's been tough when you, if you don't get the kind of support up front that you'd like to have, and it makes it tough with those corners. They are not the size people that you want having to make every stop at them, 195 and 185. That makes it very hard. We're on that Vanderbilt uh, sideline. You're, you're thinking, of, hey, what are they talking about over there? What kind of strategy could they possibly come up with? I'd be thinking about what I wanted for Christmas if yeah. I was down 38 to nothing. I'll tell you Six the truth. Points. Schuler drills it to Faulkner. That's not a bad toss going the wrong way to make that kind of delivery. Oh, no. This young man can throw the football now. In, in uh, high school, I said he was an All-American. He threw for 7,684 yards and 74 TDs. He had 2,530 yards rushing for 30 touchdowns. So with only 25 interceptions. So you know he's got the cannon loaded up. Schuler said, you know, there's always a possibility that could have been redshirted, but... Why not come in behind a guy like Andy Kelly and learn all there is, get what work I can, and I'll take over the reins next year. He's got the reins here in the fourth quarter. He's got a man wide open. Touchdown! Faulkner, his eighth catch of the day, and was that a strike? The Heath Schuler Laser Light Show. This is a laser, folks. That's the only way you can describe this pass because it's thrown on the rope on the straight line right to Craig Faulkner in the end zone. He's wide open.
again, they've had trouble in Van with Vandy in the secondary covering the slot receivers all day. Bex brought in for the point after. Up and good. We talked earlier about Craig Faulkner. He says, I'm not a possession receiver. I got some speed. And like 4-4. Four, four. Well, number four has a 15-yard touchdown catch here. And you can see they're playing zone back there in the secondary, but the problem is that's the end zone that they're playing with. <laughs> 14 minutes to play, Tennessee by 45. 14 minutes to go, Tennessee 45, Vanderbilt nothing. Faulkner with a touchdown catch moments ago, capping another 50-yard scoring drive. I don't expect Chapman to kick one anybody can catch. Harris, I think Corey Harris probably should have fielded that one and maybe done something with it. It was about two yards deep. Well, this one right now is a blowout in Tennessee's favor. Yeah, you know, and, and thinking back to some of the times when I was playing with the Bears and blowouts, and we were involved with a game with the Green Bay Packers. We were beating them 61 to nothing in the, uh, it, was, it was in the high 50s, excuse me, and our, our coach told Mike Phipps, our quarterback, not to throw when he came in the game, and Phipps hadn't thrown a ball in about three weeks. <laughs> he goes, yeah, right. <laughs> First Forget thing he did was go to the air. That's exactly what Schuler did in that situation. Well, Schuler had come in having thrown only two passes, both incompletions. In that drive, he already had two completions, a couple of rocket shots, one for a touchdown. Wilson on the toss. Harris got about four. Jeremy Lincoln knocked him out of bounds. Along with Daryl Hardy. By, by the way, the end of that story is we beat the Packers 61 to 7. I was going to say, you had a big smile on your face. I thought we were going to have to wipe it off you over there. And here comes an entire new group in the secondary. There go some seniors. Johnny Majors, part of the applause for Carter and Lincoln and Miley. What a job they've done today. Wilson throws on the run. Harris, nice move. Two good moves to the 42-yard line and a first down. Tracy Smith made the stop, but Harris on the pass reception got 17 yards. He put a nice move on Daryl Hardy out there, and Hardy, number 87, the outside linebacker, is a senior as well, and I'm sure he's probably looking over at that sideline and looking for Larry Lacewell, the defensive coordinator, and saying, hey, Larry, get me out of here. I'm a senior, too. <laughs> Here comes Sean Walker off. The middle linebacker, another senior. You got to figure Joe Paterno's taking a look at this one and going, oh, brother, do I have my hands full on uh, New Year's Day? Harris, nowhere that time. Got about a yard and a half. Jeff Tullis made the stop. And I would imagine we're about set to see the last of Daryl Hardy, the senior Number 87, who's still calling the shot, still looking to the sideline, but what a career he has had at Tennessee. And one by one or two by two or so, Johnny Majors will pull off a group. 28 players, 27 seniors, and Carl Pickens, who are in their final home appearance. Penalty marker down. Free play for Wilson. He paid the price for that free play. Hardy, the guy I just talked about, made the hit. Yeah, almost free. <laughs> almost free. <laughs> Todd Kelly, I think, was the guy offside, and then he tried to run Wilson down from behind. One of the things that you do on a broken play, though, like that, or a penalty play, is you got a violation of Newton's own defensive team. Five yard penalty. 58 Todd the Kelly right there is the guy that jumped in the neutral zone. Yeah, you got to save yourself if you're running downfield in your markets. Wilson, you got to try to protect yourself and the numbers through uh, the third quarter 511 they came in averaging 454 that was second in the SEC and if Florida was your guess to be the top team you're right that's okay that's a great point average all those guys over on Vandy's side on <laughs> 5 .1. they're on the Tennessee side of midfield for the first time in quite some time Wilson pump fakes wants to go deep Incomplete. That civilian. There was a civilian after the ball, too. It was a guy with a camera down there. See him? The guy about, with the long lens. <laughs> five yards out of bounds. It was a civilian. <laughs> well, number two's forte, Marcus Wilson, is not throwing the ball. He's four out of 12 for 42 yards. 
And Daryl Hardy just came out, the linebacker, number 87, that we talked about. He's done for his career, with the exception of the bowl game. Second down and 10, with 12 minutes and three seconds to go in the ball game. Wilson with a quarterback draw. Swarmed under at the 41-yard line. Reggie Ingram, the middle linebacker, in on the hit. We're just talking about the Florida Gators. They're leading Florida State 14-3 in the third quarter. Here's Daryl Hardy. What a good feeling, not only to have had such a great career, but to go out with a victory over an in-state rival. You know you can relax a little bit over the fourth quarter. Bushel basket of bowl games and two SEC championships. Harris. Harris, tough run to the 30. Harris isn't quitting either. No, but when you look at those seniors over on the sideline for Tennessee, you got to think that, the, you know, with the two SEC titles, a, a wonderful record, consecutive uh, bowl games on January 1, three of them. Uh, what are they going to do with all of that jewelry, man? They're going to have to get some special <laughs> insurance. Johnny Majors told us yesterday, you got to go back to 51, 52, right in there to find a group that has been as successful as this class of freshmen. And boy, they've been successful today. 45 to nothing with under 11 minutes to play. Wilson pressured, got a great block. And still lost yardage. And Corey Harris threw the block of the day. You were talking about him still playing hard. Boy, was that a shot. You want to see an ear hole job, watch this block by Corey Harris. Ooh. Ouch. That makes a highlight film, but you always hope, too, that uh, David Bennett, number 26, can get up. He's strong safety. We'll check on him when we come back. 10.44 to play, 45-0 volunteer. Over at the uh, Tennessee training facility, there's a chart, and in the heading on that chart is the Hostile Hit Award. Well, in that last play, Ben Talley might have added his name to the list. <laughs> there's the hit by Harris. And Dave Bennett went out apparently okay. That's the good news. Wilson loads and goes. And he get it complete, he did, to the five-yard line, a civilian. That's the longest pass play of the day for Vanderbilt. Well, the, th the thing I like about Vandy, though, is, you know, they just hung in there. I mean, it's hard to stay in a ball game when you're getting dog. And they just, you know, stayed in there and just kept fighting. And that, that bodes well for them, I think, in the future, though, because you develop a lot of character in this kind of a situation. If there's one good thing that comes out of it, is you learn, you, you know, you test your metal a little bit. We don't mean staying in it by scoreboard. We mean staying in it as far as effort. Exactly. And they have certainly done that. First and goal at the Tennessee five. Remember earlier they were stopped inches short of the Tennessee goal line and so far the Vol defense pitching a shutout. A lot of reserves in there right now and they are equal to the task on first down. Fletcher from the secondary came up to make the hit on Marcus Wilson. It'll be second and goal at about the three. Keep in, keep in mind that uh, Vandy's been down and near that goal line a few times today. And has failed to get in for the six. He's able to get on the board, period. They come up with the eyeball on second and goal at the three-yard line of Tennessee. Harris, the tailback. Nice block by Harris. Wilson pulls up, wanting to throw, and down he goes. Fisher came on the blitz James Wilson with a pressure uh, those two combined for another Tennessee sack well see when you get down to the end zone everything speeds up once again because the back of the end zone limits what you can do offensively now right here Wilson's looking for a man to uncover in the end zone no one does he decides hey I gotta tuck it up and go and he gets hammered so now instead of second and goal at the three it's third and goal just inside the 10-yard line and you know the Tennessee fans will come to life here. This is four down territory for Vandy, so in essence, they've got a couple of cracks at it. Blitz from the secondary, and it paid off again. Boy, they're 
they're just bringing it to Marcus Wilson, who now is way back at the 20-yard line. James Wilson came in for the defensive end spot, and Mark Fletcher, number 36, from his uh, strong safety spot. So it's a strong safety blitz on the play, pressure up front and pressure from behind, and that time uh, Fletcher just cleaned off Wilson's helmet. Fletcher with back-to-back -back sacks, or at least raised enough havoc to cause those sacks. Fourth and goal back at the 20. Wilson steps up, goes end zone, broken up by Fletcher. Not a bad series yeah. for Mark Fletcher. His own highlight field right there. There you have it. Been a long day for Vandy. 45-0 Tennessee. Brad Nessler and Dan Jiggins, Neyland Stadium in Knoxville, 45 to nothing. Here's the last prayer Vandy put up, and Fletcher, who had two sacks on the drive, comes up with this gem. Just reaches in and just breaks up the play. Civilian was down there uh, in the end zone. Excuse me, Derek Grad was down in the end zone trying to make the reception for Vandy. So Tennessee from its own 20-yard line, leading 45 to nothing with 8.09 to go. And Jerry Colquitt in a quarterback now. He Schuler did his job, got a couple of plays to touchdown. So they get Colquitt some work. And out to about the 21 is Phillips. Colquitt, a freshman, 6'4, 204. And I'm sure Vandy had no idea what Johnny Major's troops had waiting for him. And you go back to the beginning of the game, in fact, before the game, and if you join us at the top of the show, you saw what was a, a fairly good-sized melee that occurred between the two teams just trying to take the field before the pregame warm-ups. There's a pass to the tight end, Adams. I beg your pardon, it's Jerry Teal. Teal with a reception and a big gainer down to the 47 yard line of Vanderbilt to finish that thought that fight that occurred before the game I think Tennessee got fired up they just have not looked back yeah uh, you know it's best to let sleeping dogs lie sometimes and they didn't do that uh, Vandy didn't. Phillips he's got about a dozen more kind of like one of those Clint Eastwood things give me a reason you know Phillips the freshman from Nashville He's approaching the 100-yard mark. And another Tennessee first down as the clock works its way under seven minutes. Some reserves getting some work on that offensive line for Tennessee. James Warren, Kevin Mays, Brian Spivey, Chris Alston, and uh, Rodney Gordon. Boy, so valuable for these guys to get some work before the bowl game and before what will be a big season for them again next year, no doubt. Phillips. As Woolridge, that 219 pound, and probably weighs about 213 by this point in the game, still working hard at the nose, made the tackle. You know, uh, one of the things you look at with Vanderbilt, uh, and talking with Jerry Donardo, he says it's one of the things that he really uses as a tool recruiting, and that is that, you know, the great education that you're going to get at Vanderbilt. And, uh, obviously, these young men will go on to do some great things in life, and, uh, and that's something else that you take with you out of college football, as well as the playing and the winning and all the rest of that is, is what you learn. And, probably the most important thing that you take away from college with you. They learned a lot this year from that first year head coach who's done a fine job. Colquitt. And he's got another volunteer first down. Yeah, I can just hear old Johnny Majors now talking to us again about how hard it is to recruit, <laughs> you know, <laughs> how much work he's got to do. He said yesterday, he said, I got to run, fellas. I, I got to go out and start recruiting. <laughs> Tell you, there's uh, they're all here. They're all here. Sign some autographs at this stage of the game. This is hate and hate winds his way to about the 17 yard line, and that I believe is going to put Hayden over 100 yards. 102 for Hayden. Stewart went out with 145, and Phillips has 87. There you go. 
Nice job, guys. There's the numbers. And Faulkner's got over 100 receiving. And, of course, Kelly went out with two more touchdown passes. You can put up all the numbers because they are all in the favor of Tennessee. With under five minutes now to play. And a 45 to nothing lead. Hate trying to sweep the left side this time. Penalty markers down. Uh, I, I'll, I'll call this one because I, I think it's on a tight end. He's not really an offensive lineman. I think Teal had a nice block on the corner. The tight end, uh, number 84, maybe a little bit too good. Boy, I tell you what, these linemen ought to be buying you good dinner run, when it's all over. Holding, holding, line of scrimmage, <laughs> 10 yard penalty. There's one thing you know, when you go out to dinner with linemen, you get real food. <laughs> you don't get any of that cheese and all that kind of stuff, you know. <laughs> no brie, huh? No, no, no brie. <laughs> A little frown on that young <laughs> lady she's, volunteer. She's still mad about that field goal in the first uh, first half. <laughs> Speaking of the lady volunteers, uh, the defending national women's basketball champions, of course, Pat Summit, who was honored uh, here as uh, a former Olympian at halftime. She'll be part of the SEC Big Ten Challenge doubleheader of women's college basketball. I'm going to be back here for that at the end of December. And the Vandy women's basketball team, one of the fine women's teams in the country under first-year coach Jim Foster, too. And we understand they're watching the game somewhere out in Boulder, Colorado today. They're in a tournament. And they're we wish them the best, and I'll uh, see you the end of December. They're, some watching, they're watching it on the satellite dish. Had a nice opportunity to meet with the uh, Tennessee track team last year at the NCAA championship, which they won the men's side. And uh, they did a fabulous job out there. So Tennessee athletically has got things really rolling. Got that right. Colquitt with a four wide receiver group. Third down at 10. Keeps it on the ground to Hayden. And nice job tripping up Hayden is Rod Keith, the senior linebacker. Playing his final game of his collegiate career. You know, one of the things that you don't want to see in a game like this is uh, you don't want to see any tussles and extra stuff because uh, one of the things you have to do, I think, still is respect your opponent. And you don't respect them by, you know, well, the foolish ball, penalties, that kind of personal thing. Personal foul, orange team, 15 yard penalty. 15 yarder, they'll walk the off against the volunteer. And you know, John doesn't like that much. No, because it says there's no need for it. You know, it doesn't, it doesn't improve your game. His team, ninth ranked in the country, and they certainly aren't hurt, hurting their ranking with this performance today. Johnny had. Tennessee graduate 1957 and uh, runner up to the Heisman Trophy to Paul Horning who was on a Notre Dame team that won only two and Johnny Majors was looking at 10 or 11 wins <laughs> but he's won a national championship as a coach at Pittsburgh and he's got a great program here now it is 15th season Phillips dropped for about a yard loss and Vanderbilt will take over on downs with 3.12 to go. We got a timeout with 3.12 to play. Tennessee up big. Stewart, number one on this day, no doubt, with 144 yards and a couple of touchdowns. Tennessee leads with 3.12 to go in the ball game. Brad Nessler, Dan Jiggett's with you. There were 94,976 here. A lot of them have started to head home, knowing their volunteers are well in command. Completion. Wilson got it out to Anthony Carter. And a first down. Anthony Carter, that's a tough name to live up to as a wide receiver. That's something else to be tabbed with. Tennessee now bringing off some more folks and putting in some reserves. Well, Shazan Bradley came off along with uh, Chuck Smith. Chuck Smith, another senior. Wilson in trouble despite the fact Smith's not in there. And it's Horace Morris who just came in. Nifty name and a nifty sack on his first play in there. For the seniors at Vanderbilt, uh, this is a tough one to go out on, but... Uh, like we were talking about early, you know, they go out to some, some awfully nice things in their future, and that's one of the things that you always keep in the back of your mind. Guys like the Lewis Woolridge, the nose tackle position. 
Davis in that secondary worked hard today. Wilson in trouble again, incomplete. He got popped as he let go of the ball. Ben Talley came looping around there to put the pressure on. Rod Keith, that inside linebacker, is a senior, playing in his uh, last uh, collegiate football game. On offense, Bobby Craycroft with left tackle. Kevin Brothen at center. Kevin the Beast Brothen. <laughs> So Johnny Majors' team will go to 9-2. and two. After being 9-2-2 two and two a year ago, they'll be 9-2 and two after this one's over. Play action. Wilson loads it, goes across the middle. That's the kind of day it's been. Civilian couldn't hold it at the 37-yard line. You know, you look for character a lot of times when you're, you know, you're looking to draft people, too. And uh, Corey Harris, number 22 for Vandy, still in there fighting it out. Uh, he said when he started the game, he had 1,600 all-purpose yards, over 1,600. He's still in there playing hard. He's playing one of his last games uh, as a collegiate uh, ball player. He had a 51 yards coming in to break the Vanderbilt uh, all-time rushing record. And he did that today. Up around 90 on the day. Play fake to him. Wilson in trouble. Finally got rid of it somehow. And should have been a face mask, maybe. Maybe he got the pads. At any rate, fourth down, and it comes up short. Timeout with 2.01 to play. Tennessee's in front. 2.01 to go. Tennessee 45, Vanderbilt nothing, as the announcement was just made. The 28 players were making their final appearance here at Neyland Stadium today. And that drew another standing ovation folks still left here in Knoxville. Tennessee offensively. Schuler back at quarterback. He just kind of keeps it looking to wind down the last couple of minutes of this one. So Tennessee the last four years has come into this matchup with Vanderbilt and seen their club down at halftime. And boy, they weren't trailing at halftime today. In fact, they led 24 to nothing in intermission. And they've almost doubled that with a 45 to nothing count with 130 to play. Phillips into the secondary. Flags down. Ricky Melt made the tackle. See, we've got another holding call. It is. signatures on that one. <laughs> that guy's been busy. He's been busy in the Tennessee offense. Problem is, that's an NFL ball, son. That's where a lot of those guys are going next. <laughs> <laughs> about half of the 28, right? That's it. Let's talk about our Makita players of the game today. James Stewart, 144 yards and a couple of touchdowns. And Robert Davis of Vanderbilt, who had to make so many tackles in the secondary and play tough right up to the very end. Schuler. Keeps it down to the 28-yard line. Under a minute now. Schuler, as Dan mentioned, not only a great career in high school as a, a rusher, but uh, showed his arm today with a touchdown pass. Fiesta Bowl, they're licking their chops, knowing <laughs> they've got one of the better matchups in college football flying ahead. Boy, do they have a setup coming with Penn State and Tennessee coming in there. That should be a dandy. Maybe the final play of the game here. Phillips stays in bounds and all the way to the seven yard line. And I think now we've got 300 yard backs. We mentioned it way back at about halftime, just the way things had been going. I think we might have 300 yard backs and 600 yards of offense. So Phillips has got 107, so that's three backs over 100 yards, one receiver over 100 yards, and probably over about 600 yards of offense for the Tennessee Volunteers. Wow. They volunteered to crush Vanderbilt today. On the option, Cole quit, waits and waits and goes to Hayden. He got it down to about the two, stood up there. Well, actually goes in, but whistles it blown. He did the nasty plunge into the end zone. <laughs> well, he can always say he was in the end zone. 
He won't get six next to his name, I don't think. This game is over. All Tennessee. Johnny Majors. Team notches its ninth win of the season. Final score, Tennessee 45, Vanderbilt nothing. We'll be back in Knoxville right after this. <laughs>